welcome all uh, in today's video uh, we'll be looking into other loading schemes in the previous videos like uh, we have seen uh, a number of loading schemes uh, like uh, compile and go direct thinking loader absolute loader so like this so in the other loading schemes we'll be discussing about binders linking loaders we'll be seeing about overlays and next is dynamic binders so here the loading process is divided into two parts the first part is binder and uh, the second part is module loader now let us try to understand what is this uh, binder is Binder is actually a program that performs the same function as direct linking loader. in binding subroutines together so over here what it does is placing happens that is relocated and linked text directly into memory what it does is instead of placing it in uh, memory it directly outputs as a text file or card deck here the output file is in a formatted way Or in a formatted ready to be loaded and this is typically called as a load module this load module what it does is it physically loads the module into core so here the binder performs the following tasks that is allocation relocation and linking 
and the module loader performs the function of loading so these are the things that you have to discuss if anything is asked based on binders now we'll get into what is called as dynamic loading so in the previous methods or previous loader schemes we have assumed that all subroutines needed are loaded into co at the same time so sometimes what it does happens is the uh, module size uh, would be greater than the uh, available core so in that case uh, the previous methods uh, does not work so therefore there are several uh, methods uh, that are available uh, like uh, paging and uh, segmentation which solves the uh, problem so here we proceed in uh, one more particular way and that particular way is as, as follows let us assume uh, an example so let us assume a is a procedure which the module size is 20k and b is a procedure which is 20k and again c is a procedure which requires 30k and d is a process which requires 10k and d is a process which requires 20k now what happens is when a is loaded into the core then the relation relationship between the other modules is represented by the arrow mark that is here here and then b so means to say that when a is in the core then B should also be in the core and D should also be in the core and E should also be in the core. Now what I will do is we will try to understand the relationship between the other modules. So from B again what you have is so here we write like this and again we write like this. So here when B is in the core then C should also be in the core and in addition to that E should also be in the core when D is in the core then E should also be in the core this is the uh, relationship and the total size of this is 100k so this is nothing but your subroutine calls between the procedures now what we try to do is we try to uh, come out with the overlay structure the overlay structure is like this that is a which requires 20k when a is being executed then other modules should also be there and that is b should b should be loaded in the core and in addition to that d also should be there and again e should also be there which requires 20k 
and when B is in the core then this E should be there as well as C should be there and when D is in the core then E should also be there so the size of this is nothing but 70k now if in the RTF procedures if all the program is loaded into the core then we required uh, 100k but depending upon the uh, after analyzing the uh, relationship between the different modules we now see that 70k is enough to run a program size of 100k and this structure of analyzing is called as overlay structure and uh, there, is, there is some possible representation uh, of assigning all these blocks so this is a possible uh, notation where in which the memory spaces are allotted in the memory so all these things are nothing but in the free space so it goes from 0 to some 100k so this is a possible storage so where this is 20k this is 40k and uh, here it is 60k and here it is 80k so almost around 70k uh, this possible storage structure is enough this is uh, possible storage assignment of each procedure so this is the uh, overall structure that we need to understand in uh, dynamic loading we shall see a few more points uh, regarding this dynamic loading in order for the overlay structure to work it is necessary for the module loader to load various procedures as they are needed so in order to do this specific task a specific uh, uh, what we can say is uh, specific details there are many binders which does or which uh, implement which process and allocate the overlay structure so here what we do is when it does it then that is usually called as the overlay supervisor or we simply call it as flipper what this uh, flipper does is here the in this particular process the loader what it does is it inter intercepts the calls and loads the necessary procedure
So this overall scheme is called as dynamic loading or it is also called as load on call so which is local in nature so these are the things that we need to discuss if anything is asked based on uh, other loading other loader schemes thank you